In the last episode of our Excel series, we talked about pivot table basics. Now we're gonna get a little bit more into the look and feel, see how we're able to modify them um, and just make them a little better. I'm Allison Gonzalez, a Microsoft Certified Trainer here at Pragmatic Works, back with another Excel basic for you. So let's get over into Excel to get started. In our last pivot table video in this Excel series, we went over setting this up and we went over getting this pivot table, moving it around, moving around and setting up our data. Now what I want to do is go a little bit more for the aesthetics of this and being able to change this look and feel so it's not really this very traditional look and feel of a pivot table, but make it look really engaging and interesting to look at. So I'm going to give you my favorite tips and tricks to do this. First off, easiest thing you can do, click into that pivot table anywhere. You're going to notice you get these pivot table analyze and design tabs here at the top. These are where I want you to get comfortable moving around and trying these things out. And we're going to try out a bunch of things in these tabs today. In your design tab, we're going to go over to this one first, and we have an entire section here of all of these great different designs. So if you want to put minimal effort into this, picking one of these is going to elevate your pivot table design with really minimal work for you. So there's light, there's medium, and there are dark ones. And so you can really play around with kind of the style that you like the best tons and tons of different options in here. I'm going to go with this blue one kind of close to the pragmatic works colors. So we're going to use this blue one here. This is fine, but let's make some options here. Let's kind of design this, get some more space around this. So first off to kind of space out my sections a little bit here again in my design tab, I'm going to add some blank rows. So in this blank rows, I'm going to insert a blank line after each item. And it's going to insert it after the item space that I put it. So I've selected the last item in a section. So when I do that, notice it's added not just after this first top section, but also after soups and salads, the last one in the food section. If I had, you know, more sections, the same, it would keep adding it after that last one. So I like this, it kind of spaces out my sections a bit more. So that way, uh, cause it's some breathing room, lets your eye rest as you're moving through here. You're also over here able to, if you want to move your subtotals, which is my top row right here. If I want to move that, I can either not show it at all. If I want to get rid of those numbers, I can decide to show it at the bottom instead or back up at the top where it was. But you can play around with that, get the look that you want with this. I'm going to remove those for mine. You're also able to remove the grand total. So you can see that you can have it off for rows and columns or on or just on for rows or on for columns. So you can really decide which way you want to go. I can see I have it on. There is it turning off. And there, if I had it just on for rows or on for columns only. I could see how that would work. So I'm going to turn both of those back on. You're also able to play around with that pivot style option. If you want to have banded rows, if you want to, or banded columns, definitely think you don't need banded rows and columns. It looks a little bit too much like a spreadsheet and we want a little bit more professional look here. So I'm going to go ahead and take those bands off. And of course the band style is dependent also on the pivot table design style that you chose as well. Next thing that I want to do is I want to set up some conditional formatting. So for this grand total row, I'm going to do some formatting for this one. So I'm going to select the elements in here, and then I'm going to go over to home. Then I'm going to go to this conditional formatting button. And here in this conditional formatting button, I want to add data bars. There's a few other options, but we're going to go with data bars. Icon sets is another cool one that you're able to add in. 
we're going to go with data bars and we can see the different options that I can go in. I can just hover over and I can see these kind of color related. I kind of wanted the blue one that goes with my color palette and I can see that this one is a gradient and I can see it covers it partially. So obviously the really large numbers get full the most and then, or we have a solid. So I can have the gradient or the solid, whichever one I like best, like this gradient one. I could also in that same conditional formatting tab, go down to the bottom of this instead for my data bars and go to more roles. Lots of these design options will give you the ability to format this so much more. You can get all of the different details that you would like to change in here. So I can decide that style if I want just the data bar, if I want to show the data bar only right now, I have the text, but if I want to just show the bar here, I could click and that's going to get rid of the text here. I can set my minimums, maximums. If I want to change those numbers, of course, we can adjust the fill of the bar. I can see that preview. Here's that gradient option. I can decide if I want a border or no border or even change the bar direction here and set that negative axis. So lots of options to be able to play around with here. So if I hit OK, we're going to see this now adjust and we have a lot for the kind of non-alcoholic beverages and we can see all of those numbers and get a nice little visual there without having to have it in the actual number. Now, if you want that number, you can always add it in as a second column. So this is coming from that grand total. So I could always have that get added back in if I want to see the numbers as well. Another thing I want to do is give this some formatting. So I'm missing on here, obviously the dollar sign as well as the comma. So I'm going to make sure I select all of my data. I don't have a lot, so I could easily do this, but of course the key codes to do this would be control shift and then down arrow. And then I can get to the bottom if I click that a few times because we have some spaces in there. And then control shift and the over gets all the way to the edge. So control shift down arrow gets you down. Control shift right arrow takes it all the way to the edge of your data. Now that we have this selected, I'm going to hit control and the number one. So the control key and the number one, and that pulls up your format window. You can also go into your format. I need to pull this up, but we love a good key code with Excel. So now in here, I'm going to go to currency. And in my currency, I want to make sure that I have that dollar sign. I've got two decimal places and I have that comma in place. So I like this formatting and I'm going to hit OK. And there we go. Now it's a little bit easier to understand that. I'm going to head back on over to my pivot table analyze and I'm going to make some more changes here to my setup. All right, on our pivot table analyze tab, we're going to right over here to our options. Anytime you're doing a pivot table, you should review this. One thing I always want to uncheck is this auto fit column with on update because these are going to auto size over here. And we want to make sure we have this unchecked, especially for these data bars right here. Otherwise, it's going to squish them up when we do our update. And we don't want that. So we're going to uncheck so they stay at this size. I do want to make sure that preserve cell formatting on update is checked. That way, any formatting we do stays the same for all of these. You can also check in your totals filters, your display options, printing data and alt text, but mainly that layout and format that auto fit is the one I change in here. Next here in our pivot table analyze to change this look and feel, I'm going to come over here to this show section all the way at the end. First off, I'm going to deselect the field headers and as I check on they uncheck that you can see it's disappeared right over here again you can check it see that column label row label and then we can uncheck it and it clears that out makes it much easier to read i'm also going to get rid of my plus and minus buttons you can see that's the kind of collapse buttons right here next to our headings so i'm going to click on that and that makes this just more of a set list again we're kind of stepping away from that pivot table feel that give it more of like a nice finished end result. One other thing that can help do that is of course remove our field list. So this is my pivot table fields right here and I can click to remove that. So it kind of takes it out of that pivot table editing field and gives you that finished look. 
course, if you need to make changes, you can bring it back at any time or just remove that field list by clicking in that show section here. Then we can really just go through and make any other modifications we need. So let's say I want to bold these headers can select to bold those, make them a little bit larger. Um, we are able to, I'm just going to put a space here to remove that title, kind of hold it space since it doesn't like the blanks. And we can also, the white is a little bit hard to read on this lighter background. So I'm going to make sure I'm picking a really dark color so that it stands out even more over here I need to do my formatting as well so again control one it gets up our formatting and we want this to be currency there we go it's looking much more interesting a lot more engaging another element that we can think of is time so how are these food sales over time now we know if we brought back our fields list I have days and months I could pull those elements in, but I don't want to kind of mess with the look and feel of this. I want to have essentially kind of like almost a slicer option to choose from. So what I'm going to do is go over again here on my pivot table analyze, and I am going to insert a timeline. So in this filter section is also where we could insert a slicer. I can insert this timeline. And we're going to get this pop-up window here. We're going to pick the date, hit OK. And then we have this nice little slider right here where I'm able to move through the months. I can kind of play with this, resize this if I want to adjust the time period, the months, and what that is going for in here. I can see I can change from months to quarters, years, days as well. Um, and I can work on that adjustment. And that just gives me a nice way to navigate through the data. And of course, with this timeline, I have edit options. So I could pick different styles if I didn't like this one. I could go with this blue, it's a little bit closer and matching my options over here. So I can change that timeline caption up here um, and it's look and feel if I want to adjust that scroll bar, have everything, have the time level in there, play around with that on your timeline ribbon on here. I'm going to resize that back so it's a little bit smaller. But now we have come so far from that pivot table that we started out with. I can see that I am looking much more polished with this layout even if i want this to match i can go through and adjust this if i want to have a border like this one i can go through and add that in i'm going to select this and go with a thick outer border all right so we know, and of course, if you want to give it some breathing room, we can insert some uh, extra column over here. Then I can come over here to my page layout tab and in the sheet options, I can get rid of my grid lines. And there it takes me out of that very spread sheet looking page and makes this a little bit more presentable for looking at your data. So. We've come really far from what we started off with just by making some few tweaks going into our standard pivot table designs and then going into some different modification windows to adjust this. So hopefully you're excited to jazz up your pivot tables, take them out of that standard layout and just make that a little bit easier and more exciting for your eyes. Leave a comment below if this is something that is totally new to you and you're excited to put this into practice or if you have other tips and tricks about this that you could put into play. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. That way you'll be able to see all the videos as they come out. All the videos here on the Pragmatic Works channel are about all the topics on the Power Platform, not just Excel. So you learn about Power BI, Teams, Power Apps, and much more. Also, you can sign up to take hours and hours of Excel training over on our on-demand learning platform, and I will have that linked for you below. 
So happy learning and I will see you in my next video.